today I'm coming back at you with another painting tutorial. Uh, today we will be doing the third and final painting in our Galaxy Goddess series. Uh, we will only be doing the silhouette portion of this painting and if you need to um, if you want to know how, not need to, if you would like to know how to do the galaxy portion of the painting, please refer back to my other two painting tutorials. I will um, link those below. I just want to keep this video shorter today. So that's what we will be focusing on, the goddess part, the silhouette part. So um, and please, if you um, follow along with this video, can you um, send me your paintings on my social media? I really appreciate it. Uh, it's at, at Love Pray Paint. Um, I'll also have those linked for my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, just please, if you do follow along with this, I really would love to see your end product. Uh, I am just, you know, really enthusiastic about that. Uh, and please like and subscribe if you want me to keep doing these painting tutorials um, and it please really hit the notification icon at the bell icon uh, if you want to stay up to date with all of my painting and haul and everything about art this video, video is going to be a little bit different because I will not be like in the video painting it um, I'm gonna do like an overhead shot uh, so you can um, solely see the painting itself um, up close and personal and without this ugly mug in the video um, and I'm going to be just fast forwarding through the galaxy part and that's all I want to just say that's my kid screaming in the back sounds like a goddamn psycho Woo, ha 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 yeah okay that's it to lose here we will start painting we will get in I'm angry. We will start painting. Okay, guys. Um, I am going to go ahead and tell you what paint and supplies we are going to need. We are going to need um, primary blue, Liquitex Basics. Primary yellow, Liquitex Basics. Primary red. Liquitex Basics. I guess I don't have to say Liquitex Basics. Titanium White, um, Permanent Black, and the brushes I will be using today. Oh, and you will need a blow dryer and water to rinse your brushes off. Um, I'll be using a toothbrush, and I will be using a couple detail brushes as well. Um, I'm trying out some new brushes, so just bear with me. Um, they are the um, Master's Touch brushes. I got them. You can watch my Hobby Lobby haul. I'll link that below. Um, and they were on sale. They were 50% off. Uh, so it came in a pack of four, and they were only like $2 in some cents. Um, so this is a um, number two detail brush that I will be using for this. And then um, a number five flat. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not. It is a liner brush, but it looks, I don't know, the, these, these, I don't like when paintbrushes have these hairs sticking off like that. It's like, what good is that going to be? It's going to make a very uneven line for it being a liner brush. Um, and then I have used this one. It is the number 12 round. Um, and I really, I was pretty impressed by the quality of this considering how cheap it was. So if you're looking for new brushes and you're on a budget, these are great. So then we are also going to be doing um, something new with our silhouette. We are going to be making a stencil for it instead of just drawing it right on the canvas. I wanna just show you a couple different uh, ways of making, making, I just wanna show you a couple different ways of making a silhouette painting instead of just the one way with the chalk. So um, we will need a like a nice stiff piece of paper and a pencil or 
whatever kind of drawing utensil um, that you need or have or need or have. So that we will also need and a pair of scissors. So right now, oh, and you will also need a sea sponge okay, and a sea sponge you will also need. Will you whisper? Something happy in my ear Just a sad to make me disappear I am so tired of seeing love Go back to what it was before Lips had dead to me Baby, you would never do that to me Leave me wanting in the cold for a boat in They have their minds up by now We're never gonna show them how A love doesn't falter Laid up on the altar of time Galaxy, we can work on our stencil while that is drying. Um, so what you're going to need is a piece of paper, a any type of writing utensil. I'd prefer a pencil just because you can erase that. Sorry. Uh, so what you can do is either if you have a light box or even just your phone um, and you're not good at just like freehand drawing, um, see like you can enlarge the image Sorry, I don't know why my, am I coming to focus? You can enlarge the image on your phone because Pixel lets you download the image for free. It's a free use website. Um, so you can, if you can see, obviously you can, I'm sure, do that and kind of just make sure she's the right size for your canvas. Um, that's about how big I want her. Um, and then you would literally just put her over this and you can see her right through the paper if you have a thin enough paper or you can print her out um you know crop her to the size that you want print her out put her under like um you know like a lightweight um something that's stiff enough but is still see-through so i wouldn't use like transfer paper or you know what i mean i wouldn't use like something like that because it wouldn't be thick enough when you're unless you want to keep redrawing it um, it wouldn't be thick enough for when you're trying to trans, you know, draw it out onto your canvas. So, um, this is, yeah, just, you would do that. I've never done that, but why not? Um, it might be helpful if you tape this down as well, your paper, just so like when you're drying it, it doesn't move around. Um, and be careful not to touch your phone because you're, you could probably still see you can still move her around. So if you are doing this with a phone, don't um, touch your phone. <laughs> so, get her hand. Ah, she's moving. I don't know if this is the best idea.
much. Um, yeah, and you're just going to trace her out. And just be careful you don't tap the, um, tap the phone because see, it, it will move her around if you tap the phone. And then this hair, um, where these hair are flying up, you can really just, what I would do is just kind of follow the bottom parts of it and not really follow the flicks um, because we can just add that in as we're painting just because that we're going to be cutting this out so you got to think that's going to be really hard to, um, that'd be really hard to cut out all those tiny little hairs. Um, and if it's not perfect, what you can do is we'll just go back after, um, ah! Um, and what we'll do is we'll just go back after and, um, We'll go back after and we can just kind of tidy her up. So this is just really just to get like the outline of, you know, what her, like where she's placed, how big she is, um, little details you can fix those up. See how I'm lifting it up and looking just to see, you know, what it's her hand and what's not her hand, or what's her body and what's not her body. Um, so that's pretty important. So it looks like her hand actually goes over further. Like quite hard to do. I'd rather just draw it out, honestly. Um, it'll end up turning out better. But you know what, for the sake of the video, I'm going to try it because you know, it's important to try new things. And like I said, we'll go back in and um, that's really hard to do on a phone. <laughs> Very hard to do on a phone. Be much easier if I had like a, a light box or something like that instead. Um, but this doesn't really oops, matter all that much just because I honestly I can't see this at all. Oh, I even got that close to being right her hand over here. That's good. And now we'll just cut her out. Uh, kind of do this. We'll make her longer. I know this looks weird, but um, just so when we're putting her on the canvas it we can match her up and put her where we want. Okay, so you will just cut her out after you trace her. Um, you know what I can do? Maybe I should outline this in black and um, I can put her on, I can put her on like Pinterest or um, Facebook. I'll just upload her there and you guys, well, yeah, either, well, probably just Facebook because who the heck goes to Pinterest? Um, I still do, but I don't know if anybody else does anymore. Um... So what, yeah, so what I can do is I will take a picture of her. Oops, I rounded that and it's supposed to be square. We can fix it in the painting, it doesn't matter. Um, I will outline her in black. And I will put her on, I actually made one, another one of these stencils because I recreated this painting for one of my friends and then I sold a couple of them. Um, so I made a stencil, so when I'm not making videos and if I want to recreate it to sell it, it's easier to, um, you know, easier and faster to paint it. Because you can get those galaxy clouds done in 
10 minutes, not even. I mean, you can get through that pretty fast if you just blow dry it. All right, so this little goddess um, is done. So yeah, like I said, I will just, I will make all three of them and I will make them in black. So what you can do is you can just go on um, either, well, I can put them on Instagram too, but I don't think you can, I don't know if you can save and download pictures there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I love how I'm using my sewing scissors for this. I'm not sure you can do that. Um, I'll check and I'll try to put this as, and I'll put it on Twitter too. Uh, I'll try to put her as many places as I can and I'll link her. I'll put the direct link, not just the link to my social media, just so like, you know, you can get right to her. You don't necessarily have to look through a bunch of stuff to find her. I think, honestly, I do think the smartest thing to do is just to put her on Pinterest because then she's just, you know, you go right to her, you can download her. I don't know, we'll see what happens. So I know on Facebook you can download pictures. Um, She's a little bit, you know, she's so small that she is hard to cut out. I think I'm just going to leave that flat there and then um, we'll just draw it in the lips when we're on the, or we'll paint in the lips when we're on the canvas just because like those tiny little bumps, I mean, I have some pretty good scissor skills, but I don't think my scissor skills are that good. Oh my gosh, I just realized that sounded really bad. Um, <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. Okay. So yeah, just keep cutting her out. I'll probably fast forward this so you don't have to sit here and watch me cut out a freaking thing. I played a fancy fun part. This thing went on the wrong twos. It's like to get them out with. because um, I am going to be painting a, uh, a cat painting. Um, her cat passed away and I thought it would be a really fun learning experience for um, people because I, you know, I looked on YouTube and there are a few um, realistic cat tutorials um, with acrylic paints, but there's really not, excuse that paper sound, um, Look at what I have. Real Mexican Coca-Cola. Um, there's really not that many. Mm. So, I thought, you know what? Let me do one. All right, so our painting's all dry with our galaxy background. Um, the coloring's a little bit off here. Um, just because I don't normally film like this, so I have to figure out how to set up the lights better. So you'll just have to bear with me on this one. Um, maybe if you can see it. See how it gets that reflection? I need to get, I don't know. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Um, you can't really see the yellow and stuff, though. You can't see all the nice colors. Uh, oh well, um, because we're not learning that today. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our permanent black and we are going to create our, our horizon with the permanent black. Um, this one, on this picture, if you go to Pixel, I'll put the link for the pictures um, in the description. But if you go to the picture itself, the horizon is really low. So I'm not going to copy that exactly only because I want it to match the other paintings. Um, I want all the horizon lines to match, uh, 
you know, fairly well. They don't have to be exact, but they do have to be, you know, they have to look like they belong together. Obviously they do because of the colors, but, um, you know, I think that looks really cohesive and nice when all the horizon lines are very similar. Okay. Okay, so I have our, our other galaxy goddess painting here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up the um, horizon lines. Well, try to at least I don't have a lot of room here with my camera like this. Uh, well, we can do it like this. Uh, I just don't want to set this on top of it because I actually sold this to somebody. Um, don't want it to... So what we'll do is we'll just, you know, I guess this is fairly close to where it is, and we'll just do that um, to mark it. Shoot. What a, pause this again. Okay. So, we are going to just start by painting in our horizon and then what we'll do is um, we will paint in our girl. There's something weird on there, like a little rock. That was odd. Okay, and I'm just using this round um, brush for this. I kind of got like it kind of high right there. That is not going to matter so much because we can just kind of like see, we can just sort of smudge it out and make it look hazy esque. But there's like these little, um, looks like, what the heck are those little hills or something or almost like she's in a garden um so it's uneven anyway so you don't have to worry about um getting that perfectly even because we're just gonna make it not even any hoop. Let's ditch that brush and um, we'll just use this number eight um, filbert. Uh, number eight filbert. I don't know why I just sang that, sorry. Um, and if you, you know what, I should do a video on different, like, you know, what brushes and maybe I should do like a you know, acrylics basics 101 type um, video, just because I feel like a lot of the time in these tutorials, um, if I call a brush a certain name, or if I talk about a tooth of a canvas, or, um, you know, what to do before you paint your canvas to prepare it, what to do after you paint, um, to preserve the painting, you know, there's a lot of things besides just painting the painting that go into it uh, that I don't like to put into the tutorial. What the heck is in this? Is that a piece of... Okay, I don't know. Um, thought there was a piece of brush hair in there. Am I going crazy? Or... There is a piece of brush hair in here. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's not good. I wonder if it's from those, um, unless it's cat hair or something. Right. I don't want these marks in my painting. Okay, I got it out. Oh, what is that? Yep, that's definitely a brush hair. So those brushes that I got that I said I really liked so much are actually shedding. Um, and if you're painting a painting that you're going to sell or it's for somebody else, you definitely don't want, or even if it's for yourself, you don't want uh, 
definitely don't want that shedding, so that sucks. I got the hair out, but um, what a disappointment. Really big disappointment. I am getting so much paint in my hair right now. When I do the outro, I'm gonna look like crazy. That's okay though. Who cares, right? Over the deal, over the dial. Life is short. I should start doing these um, with no makeup on. That's what I should do. Scare the world. I'm just kidding. I like never wear makeup unless I'm like doing a video tutorial. <laughs> Pretty much never. I just feel like I should at least look a little bit put together, you know, if I'm doing one of these. Um, I guess this one wouldn't matter so much because you can't see my face. Probably wouldn't even put this in there because I'm just talking to myself right now and painting this canvas black. Why would I put that in there? I wouldn't. That would make no sense. Alrighty, so once you have that laid down, I would just take a couple minutes to run your blow dryer over it. Um, so when we run our stencil, uh, oh, and I forgot to say, this is actually one of the canvases that I bought from Hobby Lobby. Um, and I do like it, however, um, I sh what I should have done is put a gesso, uh, and not use paint. I should have done black gesso to make it a more smooth uh, canvas because I don't particularly like seeing, um, I don't like seeing the tooth through the, I don't know why that bothers me. It just, something about it makes me think of like, you know, it looks like a cheap print from like Walmart if you can see the tooth through it. I don't know <laughs> how I got that in my head or where it came from. It's just something that, you know, I struggle with and plus I feel like it just looks super amateur when you can see so much of the tooth coming through um, like they didn't take time to like put gesso or something over the canvas which I didn't <laughs> because I figured I don't know I thought this was smooth enough where I wouldn't have to do that but I was wrong um, so we're just gonna take a couple minutes uh, blow dry this and then uh, we'll get on with doing the stencil we're done um, filling in that part we are going to um we're going to trace our little lady goddess here uh, i just want to make sure her hand is up high enough uh you can tape yours down i don't want to because i don't want it to stick to the paint and peel up the paint um, but you're welcome to do that and also if you want to outline her um in chalk maybe if you have like a chalk pencil um I'm just going to be using my detail brush and paint just because I find that easier. Or um, they have acrylic uh, markers now. Um, you could outline her in black acrylic marker. That would be super easy to do. Um, but if you have one of these really tiny little um, detail brush, a detailer, number two detailer, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be relatively easy and just hold her down with your hands obviously <laughs> um and i kind of like to make a mark up here just in case she moves or something so i know where she was placed and then just go to town i mean it doesn't matter if you get paint on her and it also doesn't matter if your line is thick because this is this is um you know, it's a silhouette. So it doesn't matter if the line is thick or thin on this part. It's really, it's not gonna matter whatsoever. You just gotta get her, get her filled in and get her traced out. And this is probably the quickest way to do this, um, to get her on the canvas, but it is kind of a little bit painstaking, um, you know, cutting her out and all of that when you could really just freehand her with like a chalk on right onto the canvas or right onto the canvas with paint if you're, you know, if you're, if you're good at drawing and if you're good, um, if you're, if you're already experienced, um, artist, then, you know, obviously 
you wouldn't really necessarily have to do that, but not every artist or not every painter can draw. Um, so if you are not um, necessarily the best at drawing, that does not mean that you cannot paint. That means that, um, you know, it might be a little bit more of a struggle for you, but that doesn't make you any less of an artist. Doing stuff like this, making stencils, um, it's gonna allow you to be able to, you know, make that art that you wanna make and um, make it easier for you, especially if you're a beginner. You, this is the easiest, most foolproof way of making this painting. It's gonna be the easiest. You're, you're not gonna have many headaches doing this. Um, than trying to like freehand it onto the canvas because that can you know that can be a little bit scary especially if you've like never drawn I just want to make this easy enough so that anybody at any skill level is going to be able to do it and make something that they feel you know proud of and, and that you know, is gonna look good regardless of if their drawing level or abilities. It's just, that's a really hard skill to develop and learn. I mean, I honestly, even now sometimes, I'm not the best drawer. I, well, I just randomly, I, I had no idea in my entire life growing up. I mean, I could draw certain things, like I used to draw a lot of anime and stuff, but I really had no idea that I had any sort of, um, <laughs> I didn't know that I had any sort of artistic gift whatsoever until like a couple of years ago. And then all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, it just like, you know, something just happened where I became, you know, really interested in art and then started drawing and sketching and you know fell in love with it and you know realized that I had a skill there that I had no idea I had so if you think you can't maybe it really isn't the case maybe it's just your you know your your belief system or your limiting beliefs stopping you from thinking that you can do this or not um, so if you keep telling yourself, I can't do that, or I'm not a good artist, or I'll never be able to do that, and it doesn't matter even if it's art or not art or whatever it may be, you know, you, you can't sit there and say, I can't, I can't, I can't. I see so many people commenting, you know, they'll watch the video and they'll say, oh, your art is so beautiful. Um, I wish I could do that, but I can't. I can't. I'm not a good artist. I can't. Well. The point of the tutorial is that you can. This is for beginners. You can do it. You need it, you know, people need to take that vocabulary, that word out of their vocabulary. It breaks my heart seeing people putting themselves down like that. You know, uh, it's so important to try new things and learn new skills in life. I mean, how do you know? Maybe you, like, like what happened to me? Maybe you are a great artist and you have no idea. Maybe you don't know. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a great artist. I'm just saying um, that you, how do you know if you, unless you try, you know? And even if it doesn't turn out the first time, try it again. Just keep trying. Just keep swimming, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here I go again in my motivational speaker speeches. But, you know, that's the truth of the matter is that I'm like painting right over her and that's the thing with the stencil too that's you know the reason we have it is that it doesn't matter how it goes on it just matters that it gets on um and the little details we can we can fix them up as we go oh my gosh my daughter is upstairs in my house watching um Gosh, what was that show that was on Nanny 911? I could hear the kids screaming on it. I'm like, oh my gosh, why does she watch this? That drives me crazy. Those babies screaming. I mean, I understand and I have empathy, but it's like, it's like so fake. 
you know, they like take one clip of the kids screaming and then play that same clip throughout the whole thing. Of course, kids scream. Every kid screams. It doesn't matter how good your kid is. There, you know, was a day that your kid was acting like a crazy person too. <laughs> and yourself. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, you know... I just stuck my finger right in that paint and flattened it out, so now her hand's gonna look like a big blob. It's okay. You got this. See? Exactly. I make mistakes just like everybody else. Alright, I think we got her all the way till then. So then we're just gonna pull her up, and ta-da! There she is, the outline of our goddess. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, you know, little details here and then we're gonna fill her in. Like for me, I want, you know, this more pronounced here. Obviously it's not dark enough. Um, you know, just clean up our lines a little bit. Like her hand over here, I made a mess of that. So we're gonna have to like redo her bracelets. I was thinking that I wasn't going to put them on the stencil because I thought, you know what, that's not going to work. And you know what? I was right. Didn't. <laughs> so what you can do is just go back and make the little, the three little, there, it's like just like three little bumps pretty much. And just try to make them like equal. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't really matter if you have them on there or not. It's not about the... Um, what about that? Her hand looks like a mitten. <laughs> looks like she's wearing mittens. Isn't that cute? Looks like we really didn't get go and then we'll also be going in and adding like highlight too so um to make it pop because that's something that I didn't do on my other ones that I wanted to share with you guys today uh just because I don't know I I thought it'd be nice for you guys to see what a little bit of highlighting can do for this painting but I wanted it to be you know I wanted it to be super easy so I left that out um, but we'll do it on this one, and then if you guys do the other ones, you can go back and put the highlighting in, and I'll just show you how to do it on this one, just because, why not? Um, so we're just going to fill her in with this permanent black. My husband's over there drinking beer. Awesome. Crack in a cold one. And I'm over here just drinking my Mexican Coke. Pretty much never drink alcohol. Sometimes. I was on this kick for a little bit that I would like drink margaritas like every Saturday. I'd have like a margarita because I can't really drink because I get. <laughs> can't hold my alcohol very well. I take two sips and I'm drunk. <laughs> so I'm a cheap date, right? So I just don't really even bother drinking because it's just, you know, who wants to be just like a big sloppy drunk? Nobody wants that. Alrighty. I will say I am a fun drunk though. <laughs> um, on the smaller parts, like her hand and stuff, I'll use a smaller brush to fill that in just because I don't want um, I don't want it like on this part I probably should just be using a detail brush there this paint seems really wet like her head I'll probably fill that in like just a little bit like right here and then the rest of it I'll do with that detail brush just because I can't, I mean, I can control where this goes, but um, not that well. And like, so the more you get out of the lines, the more you're going to have to fix it up, the more you're going to, you know, the more time it's going to take. So why not just use a smaller 
brush in the first place on those parts around like the edges so you don't go out of the lines. Um, see, I just went out of the lines. So I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'll probably use the, the Simply Simmons, um, this number five, it's, it's a flat, a number five flat. And I think it was way too runny. We'll start up here. And remember, we gotta do, this is where her fun little hair flicks are. Um, but we'll put those in after we get her all filled in. Hopefully my hand hasn't been in the way at all. Knowing me, I would have been done doing this whole tutorial and my hand would have been in the way the whole time. <laughs> that would not be that surprising to me if that happened. I had way too much water on that brush. So now this is like super runny and kind of see-through. Mackie, what? My dog is just so whiny today. I don't know why he's crying so much. And that weird demon sound is my husband <laughs> talking to my dog. I don't know why he thinks that the dog wants to hear that, but apparently it does. This is probably my favorite girl. I don't know why. I just like the pose she's in. Do you need to go outside, buddy? You do? All right, so I'm gonna pause this and let my little guy out to the bathroom, and we will be right back. Ha. All right, so my dog went to the bathroom, and finish our beautiful deltas. Let me see. I'll fill in this little hand here. See, once you have it filled in, you can kind of see where you need to like, fix the lines because you know looks can be deceiving when it's not filled in. Like it looks like a big blob right as of now, which we definitely don't want it looking like a big blob. So we'll put um, this guy away. For now, I almost feel like she needs I want to 
curve this up a little so it doesn't look like she just has a big old arm because it's you know she's wearing a blousey top obviously um Okay, so then, um, on her hand, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know that lady rapping in the park, that white lady? Yeah, I love that lady. There's like a meme of her and it says, it's like her rap and says, when you turn into a badass the second you clock out of work. <laughs> That's a cool, that's a good meme. I would like to have that meme about me. Uh, she can't so get mad at that one. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, so then we're gonna take our little detailer um, in the black paint. And I'm gonna go back to her little hand here. and just kind of work that out because it looks like a midget at this point and we want it looking like a hand. down there. Um, well, this gets really difficult, like I said, with the two of the... It's starting to look like she has a lobster claw for a hand. I really can't see it with this lighting either. It's hard to kind of envision what we have going on here. But it really... Take the same liner brush. And she has these just really fun little areas like here. We'll do these ones first. Kind of just sort of um, more water in this paint because it's getting dry. Uh, you know, these fun hairs here. tooth is that when you have these little details like this it makes it really hard to do them um, because the paint is gonna you know look a different shape than it is when you're actually doing kind of if that makes any sense it probably doesn't but you want to make sure your paint's not dry also when you're doing these because you won't be able to get the dude No. Never. Never. Talking to me? No, I'm not talking to you. You talking to me, sir? Nate, that... To me? To okay, me so Lisa? she has these fun ones that are kind of blowing up in the wind. And I just think they're so cute and fun. I'm sorry, my sound is on this. Okay. Looks like her hair is just kind of flowing. Oh, for sure. In the wind here. Oh, for sure. And then it goes all the way. Let's see. 
Yeah, pretty much all the way down here with those fun little hairs that she has kind of dancing around. And if you can't see them that well, it's okay because we will um, we'll make them more visible. Now um, we're going to work on our trees and our kind of it looks like a little bit of a garden scape. Um, I think that's what it's supposed to be anyway. So I'm probably not going to use that tiny little detail brush for this part. Um, I'll use this liner brush. So what you're going to do, it kind of just looks like little like squares and then like a little bump. Um, so it's just kind of like this all the way up with these little squares and bumps and we already kind of have one in there. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, it's just, you know, I kind of want to give that sort of look to it because I, that's part of the reason I like it it has that kind of almost garden-y effect or I don't know if these are little hills or what they are. Um, so we're just going to do that real quick. Sort of just make a couple over here. So now we can work on our trees. Um, we can take this so it's a little bit faster and you don't want to put too much paint on this. Um, you're flat. It's a flat uh, number five. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the little sticks and um, trees through the sticks first. There's like one over here, then one kind of over here. Um, not too many of these. You can really put them wherever the heck you want. There's one kind of close to her right here. That doesn't matter so much. You just place them where you want. These ones are low. And there's a couple over here on the end. Just make sure if you get too much paint on your brush, you wipe it. Because if you get too much paint on there, um, the line's going to be really thick. Oh cool, you can see my tripod. Uh, oh well, whatever. I didn't notice that until now. This goes up to where the chest is. This is pretty thick, so... Um, little stick thing here. I don't know if it's a pole or a post or whatever it is, but um, it could be thick. And there's one right next to it. A little bit shorter. Pretty close. See, if you make a little mistake like that, it doesn't matter because it just blends right in. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to be making some of our little trees here. There's one like right next to her hand. It looks like I missed one of these sticks. There's kind of one like right here-ish. And really, I mean, you don't have to make this exact. It, it doesn't have to be exactly how the picture is. That's point obviously it's not but I just like the idea of it you don't even have to make it exactly like mine you can make it however you want oh you want to touch really lightly when you're doing these trees 
super important because if you push really hard, you're gonna get a thick line, and I've said that a million times, but you know, that's super important. I mean, you don't want to press too thin because then, you know, you're not going to see it. Um, but we're going to do a little trick to kind of, you know, pop that out. And I'm going to add a little more, like, foliage than that that's in the, uh, in the picture because I, I want a little bit fuller of a garden. I can't live with it just being like, you know a couple little things. I just want to fill it up. I want it to be a happy little garden. Just add a couple little guys over here. So yeah, just kind of, you know, you don't want to push really hard. You just want to skid up really lightly. Oh geez, Matt, could you be more gross? Um, it kind of looks like there's maybe a little bit of grass on this, but I don't want to get too detailed just because you can even take a little tiny detail brush and do these with it. I just thought we could get them on here quicker um, with this, this way. I'm just, I'm even adding ones that like aren't in there just because I want to. That I just want it to be a little more exciting. Um, and you know, I'm gonna add like little grass, just why don't you just add little things of grass like this? Little flicks. You're gonna flick your little brush, you know, a bird. Because this can give it a little more visual interest than just that, you know, plain horizon line. Maybe just like a little patch of grass over here, and you can maybe pretend there are maybe little. You know, it kind of looks like an Arizona sunset to me, so I like to think that maybe she's a a goddess in the desert, southwest, you know, with watching the, the sunset. Um, in the picture, it's a sunset here. Clearly, she's out at night. <laughs> but um, this is just, you know, how I want to imagine her with all these little fun little plants dancing around little things of grass poking up and you just want to swoop the you know make them in little clusters and just kind of swoop it up that um I think a detailing brush would be better for that but I really don't want to be here all night and I'm sure you don't want to be here all night either so oh and this is a fun one over here it's all rickety has a whole bunch of little branches coming off of it has lots of fun kind of grass around it. Just see all these little kind of little sprigs of grass. Kind of flick those up. Put them in randomly. That kind of looks like fun little desert plants. I sound like Bob Ross, seriously. I've got to stop. So then, once we get over here a little bit further, right here is a really big sort of beautiful um, tree that sort of has a few little um, leaves on it and it kind of dances towards her and then it'll curve towards her and then curve away from her. Sorry, my little, so yeah, it sort of dances towards her and then it's going to away from her and it's actually taller than her so we'll make it taller than her all right so then it doesn't really have that many branches down here um it kind of looks like it has one this thing looks like it's about to topple over really how it's growing doesn't make a whole lot of sense um isn't that funny how nature works sometimes I think something would just fly right over and standing up tall, tall and proud. <laughs> All right, we got a little branch there, went a little bit further down, kind of comes up and then it's 
up here. Swoops up. The little branch swoops up. Hi, babe. How are you? Do you need a hug? Baby's always need a hug. I just woke, woke up. Oh, you just woke up? Mm -hmm. How was your nap? Aww. I'm still doing okay. Yeah, okay, done. This is my last part here um, and then we have another little branch and this one's actually kind of goes out and sort of goes out and kind of goes towards her here sort of well the leaves go toward her but the, the branch itself kind of curves down um, that line's a little thick, but that's okay. No worries. And there's a little double one. This one kind of follows it to like right about there. That. Let's make a couple more little guys. some here at the top, kind of dancing out. Probably get the detail brush for those ones at the top because those are really small. They're super small. actually. Okay, so I think that's good for that. And now we're going to add our little, um, our leaves. And so what you can do for that, let me see, you can like take a little fan brush. If you have an even smaller one, that would work even better. Um, okay. And so what you're going to do, So this is going to take longer if you do this, and you can kind of, you know, just sort of um, impressionistically dot them in. Uh, I prefer the other way because, you know, it's up here. I'm not going to do that because these are far too small. The little leaves that they have on this one. So they, they give the appearance of leaves. You, you, it doesn't have to actually look like leaves. We're not just there and draw out little leaves. I mean, that would take you forever. Uh, kind of looks like right here, there's some like actually like on the tree itself a little bit. And so the problem with doing the uh, the leaves with that fan brush, which I, I much prefer, um, 
is that when you have the galaxy background, well, you can't really see them very well, I wouldn't say. Um, so, you know, kind of dotting them on like this, I think, works a little bit better because it blends into the background a little bit too much, in my opinion. Um, when you do that, just like some little deep bends right here. And then a couple of petties from here. Got some down here. You don't have to go wild with them, just put a couple here and there. That's it. You don't, I mean, you don't even have to follow what you see on the thing. Just kind of make it look like there's little things on there. You know? Um, yeah, I just, yeah, for this, you cannot tell that this doesn't look anything like leaves because it just blends into the, <laughs> the background. So we'll do a couple more, um, another little tree right here. And then pull it up a little. And there are like birds and stuff in here, which we will do. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get her highlights in. A little bump in maybe for her fan. It's pretty bright, so you can just kind of, you know, push it down. Kind of. So now what you're going to do um, is you're going to take your little liner brush here and you're going to take this and go along, you have to be, oh shit, Ugh. you have to be really careful um, when you're doing this. You're literally going to line um line around the outside of her I probably won't show this entire process just because it's kind of tedious to watch, I would think. Um, so this is what you're going to do. You're just literally going to go on the outside of her and see how this kind of just brings this alive. Um, you know, you could just kind of highlight where the, the moon would naturally hit her. Um, but since the back drop is pretty dark, I feel like you really kind of need this contrast and the painting um, to be able to see all the little, you know, all the little details and all the hard work that we've put in um, to her. And I didn't show this in my other ones just because I wanted that to be as easy as possible because this, you know, if you've already done two of these paintings, chances are you've already, you know, gotten better at painting <laughs> if you were a beginner. Um, so this shouldn't be too difficult for you to do. Um, so we are back and um, I finished the girl. I just outlined her all the way in white. Um, I just wanted to touch up a couple of things on her. Okay, so um, now ba, 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 we we will be outlining um, and highlighting our little our moon Should and right some there? birds, and then we will be done. Okay, so I'm gonna use. Um, I actually realized that I think. I like this liner brush a lot more than I thought I would, even though it has the little um, bristles hanging out. Once I got the glue off and um, 
I used it a little bit, it stiffened up a lot. So I'm gonna be using that um, number four liner brush to highlight these little trees. Oh, and I just put it in the black, awesome town. Okay, so we're gonna take our white on our little liner brush and we are gonna outline all of our little trees here. So, I mean, I guess it probably doesn't really matter where you start. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I will zoom in though, um, so you guys can get a good perspective on it. And the reason um, we're doing this is so that you can actually see the, see the, um, once our background is so dark, it'll make us be able to see the trees better. Um, and you really don't have to do both sides. I mean, you can fully outline it like the girl. I am not going to do that just because I kind of like how this looks. And you could like, you, once we do the moon, you could highlight it where the um, moon would naturally hit them. That would work just fine too. But I, you know, I want to take more of an abstract. Obviously, this is <laughs> not very realistic. So, you know, this is mainly like an abstract type thing. So I'm not really worried about where like the moon would naturally be hitting the, um, the trees. This isn't simply just to be able to um, notice them. So like that was way too much. <laughs> Dang that down a little. You wanna make sure you don't have too much um, paint on your brush because then you're gonna get way too thick of lines. So I'm doing just one side of these. Um, just because I think it, you don't really need the whole, the whole thing done. Just, that would be a little too much in my opinion, but, and if you want to take it even further, you can highlight these little grass, um, the little grass that we have, but I don't really feel I need to do that. Just keep doing this. We have one more right here. Put the highlight on. Um, you really want to be careful. These are kind of pretty thick uh, that I'm doing. They should actually be thinner. It's because I have too much. Um, I have too much paint on my brush. You just really have to be careful with that. Um, because. No. <laughs> you suck butts. For real. Okay, so we'll just keep highlighting all of these little fellas here. Um, I'll save this big guy for last just because he's going to be the most difficult. <laughs> <laughs> My God, <laughs> could see why I couldn't do lives. That is so funny. Well, maybe once like you know everybody's in school, but who like watches lives in the middle of the day? All right. Well, oh yeah, and if you're wondering why I wear different clothes. Is different it's because I started 
this a couple days ago and I somehow just lost the motivation to actually finish it. I don't know why, um, but I just didn't have the motivation to like want to paint. And sometimes I go through these phases where like for a few days or sometimes it's even months on end where I won't want to make any art. And I mean, this kind of forces me to keep going with it, not to like take long breaks in between because I think you can lose a lot of skill. Like, what is that saying? If you don't use it, you lose it <laughs> kind of thing. And I mean, I'm not sure if that really holds true, but I mean, it kind of does. So we'll just keep highlighting these. Yeah, I see it's so hard to um, work on a canvas that has a thicker tube for me. Right? It's just like because your brush catches and not that I want to complain about it because I don't because I'm grateful that I even have a canvas. <laughs> but, you know, it it can be kind of hard to to paint when it's like that. But now we're working on our bigger tree here that we have our little leaves on. Um, and for the leaves, you can just kind of dot around them. Um, just sort of dot them. You want to be careful you don't actually cover up your entire line uh, with the white because then, I mean, then it's just going to look like you have a white tree. Which, I mean, I'm sure it's fine and all, but that's not what we're going for here. And I like working, um, I'm sure most people already noticed, from like the bottom to the top. Um, trying to go the opposite way, making a line, like, well, you can, but it's just easier to do it this way, for me. Maybe for you, you do it the opposite way, and if you do, then do you. <laughs> I'm really quiet when I'm doing this, but um, I just, you know, detail work like this to me, it's, I have to be able to um, concentrate. not too much of a rhyme or reason, just do what looks good, I guess. Like that that would take an incredibly long time so I'm not going to do that we'll move on to our moon now um, okay so we're going to move on to our moon now our moon now Uh, 
Um, and this is actually a full moon on this. And the moon is actually almost around the same size as her head. So um, we can take our chalk if you want. You don't want to, um, where's my chalk? Uh, we'll just take our chalk and we can outline the moon if you're not crazy about um, drawing it. Or you could take like a quarter, probably maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter, but um, you know, you could use just use like a, or something circular to maybe trace it if you're not like you know if you're not the best at like drawing so we're going to pretend this is in thirds so we have you know if this was chopped into thirds that's our first there's you know our well this would be one and then two and then three but we want our moon at like where the, the bottom of our moon would be where the uh, the third like if it was chopped in a third it would be at the bottom of the first third or around you know it doesn't have to be perfect and then you're gonna want to go you know right up the middle we can erase this later so want it directly in the middle as well. Well, not, it doesn't have to be directly in the middle, but just around this general area. And if, you know, her head was, it would be around this big. And we can exaggerate it a little too. We can make it a little bit bigger than a quarter, just so it stands out. We want our little mother moon to, to stick out just a little. Oh, you erase that chalk. Easy peasy. Somebody asked me on Facebook or somewhere, I can't remember specifically where, um, that can you erase chalk easily when you're doing a painting like this. Okay, so and we have our moon in here. Um, our chalk. So we can start painting uh, our brush that we've been using just because well, we already have it handy and dandy. Um, you can use any brush you really want for this. I just like a liner brush so I can make the circle nice and precise. This is super wet. Okay. So just take your white paint, go over what you did with the chalk. And if it doesn't come out perfectly um, circular, then we can just fix it you know, after. And then we'll be able to wipe this chalk away once um, it's dry. And sometimes chalk can kind of dry your uh, paint out so you have to be careful with that because then it can make it really hard to draw a line I got a comment not on one of my videos but it was in again I think it was in Facebook this lady said that she was having a hard time understanding what I was saying she said that she that I wasn't speaking clearly. I think she meant that I was like mumbling or something. So that's an issue. I would love for people to tell me so I can explain things clearly and efficiently. Otherwise you're, you know, what's the point of me making tutorials if nobody can hear me and they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's an issue, obviously. So now we'll just fill it in. I'm not going to use this to fill it in because that's going to take forever. You can just use 
I'll just use this little guy. It's a flat number five um, brush. And make sure that since we've been working with black paint that you are changing out your water um, because when you go to do your white or you go to do like some of these other colors in here, they're not gonna be white. They'll be gray and it will take away from the contrast of the painting. Um, we are gonna put a little gray in the moon, so I guess for the moon it wouldn't really matter so much if it's perfectly white. It's not gonna matter. In fact, I think I had some paint left over on this, so mine is probably gonna be, that, does ha that has way too much. I'm like, I wouldn't mind if it was just a little bit of black, but that was a lot of black. So hopefully that's off. Um, make sure you don't have too much paint on there and then just fill this in as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just put paint on there. Um, you're probably going to have to do a couple layers because we didn't um, black out our moon. What you can do when you're doing something like this is if you don't want to have to keep going back and putting more layers of paint on it, you can draw your moon in right away or I mean, not draw it in. I mean, well, yeah, draw it in, but put like a piece of, like cut a circle like in a piece of paper and put tape like on the back of it and tape it where your moon would be and then paint your whole canvas and do the whole thing. So then this is gonna be like super bright um, when you go to paint it in here. My son got like a little cut on his lip and I attend to him. So that's what all of that yeah. ruckus was about. Okay. Okay, so we have our moon filled in. We are going to dry it a little bit. Well, I'm going to go over my white one more time just so it isn't translucent and it's super bright. Well, and I should say sometimes when you're using a synthetic flat brush, um, you don't get as much pigment as if you use like a round. Like let's say, let me see. Here I have this round brush. Here, this is a, I'll make sure there's not too much water on it. This is number 12 round. And get some paint on there. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Hopefully there's no black on that. Um, you can get more pigment with that. See, you do, because it doesn't wipe away the, the paint. Sometimes when you use a flat brush, it kind of wipes away the paint for me. I don't, not every, you know, not everybody's brushes are the same, but I've noticed that with most flat brushes, especially smaller ones, and, and if they're synthetic, that happens. I mean, I prefer to use synthetic brushes, because I think real hair, real, you know, ones that have real hair in them, one, I don't think that's ethically okay, but that's just my opinion. Um, and two, the, like, I think they're more likely to shed, but, I mean, not always, that's, not always the case, but that's just been my experience with them. So I prefer, I mean, I prefer synthetic brushes. Make sure your moon's around. Um, so then we'll let that dry a little bit. I need a gray color to make the little, you know, the little shapes in the moon. Because if you look at a picture of the moon, it's not just white, it's got, you know, it's got a few different colors in it um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do like a gray color um, and I'm gonna take a little of our uh, just a tiny bit of our permanent black we've been using and way more white and make a light gray make a really like light gray color kind of let you see so you literally just want like the smallest amount of your permanent black. Like if you dipped your brush, just the tip of your brush in there and then 
put it down and then take like maybe like two or three dips of your so like one to one to three or whatever or one to four whatever you whatever floats your boat so if you can see it actually you can't yeah you can it's right here it's like this kind of color gray it is like a nice light gray you could even add a little bit more white to that to be quite honest make sure there's not too much on your brush and what you're going to do is um make like little kind of like sexy that's too dark to me you can literally just be the smallest amount of black You want a super light gray. This is probably a little bit better. Okay, yeah, you just don't want too much contrast. And you could do this, um, this like wet on wet. Um, so it would blend a little bit easier, but I didn't want it to blend so much that I was gonna lose the color. Um, and so what I'm just doing is I'm just kind of dotting in sort of a, a regular shape um, where the sort of, you know, uh, gray mass is on here. I don't know if these are like little craters. I have no idea. I should ask my son. He knows everything about astronomy, even though he's only, even though he's only six, he's quite the astronomy expert. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna kind of make this sort of irregular gray. And then on the bottom here, there's sort of like a shadow right here on the bottom. And then also along this. Bit of a shadow. I think that's sufficient. Alright, and then if you want it to blend a little bit, you can just kind of rub it out a little. Like that. Alright. So we are gonna um, outline this bad boy. That is like way too bright. Um, with a little bit of yellow, just like we did in our other two goddess paintings. Um, I'll have those linked below. Just because for like the back drop of this, I, um, I'm just gonna skip that part in this one because it's just gonna make the video too long. Okay, so we'll take our little liner brush here um, and you could actually do this the opposite way if you wanted. It might actually make it look like it's glowing more where you do your outline of the moon in the yellow and then go over it with the white. I mean, don't fill the whole thing in yellow. Just do a yellow circle just so it kind of looks like it's coming from behind it instead of um, from around it. I, sh I should have thought of that. Actually, that would have been a great idea, but I didn't think of it until just now. <laughs> Uh, so we'll just kind of make sure you um, have your brush pretty wet because you don't want to go in on this with that pure um, yellow color because it's going to be too much then. You just want like a hint of the yellow color to make it like appear that it's glowing. And by hint, I mean more than we have right there. That's what... That's not enough. And this is medium yellow, if you're wondering. Pretty sure I already said that, but... Yeah, we're just gonna outline our little moon here. With the yellow. And if you want, you can, you know, add a little bit like in here too to kind of, you know, 
make it look like it's glowing as well. Leave it alone. We're gonna do our birds now. Um, there's a lot of birds on this. I, ooh, I almost dropped this. My kids are stomping so loud. So if you hear that in the video, I'm so sorry. Um, we're just gonna take our little liner brush here. Uh, you know, I went into really a lot of detail on how to make these birds on my other two videos. Um, so you can kind of watch that if you want a better idea. I'm just gonna kind of Paint them in pretty quickly here. These actually almost look like bats, but I know they're sparrows. We're just going to pretend they're sparrows and not bats because <laughs> I don't like bats. This paint's so dried out so bad. Mix that up a little bit. guy right here. Um, and it's flying upward, so you can just draw like a little circle for the head and then little wings. Go out like this. Kind of point down a little more. Like this is really dried out a lot. Just make sure you don't have too much paint down there. I need to put more black on here. In fact, I think I'm going to use this, even though it's not as dark. This, um, what is this one? This Mars black, because that permanent black is just, it's making me angry for some reason. I'm getting very frustrated with it, because it's very um, dry and it doesn't move around easily. I'll just kind of mix it with the Mars black, maybe it'll be a little bit better. Give me the darkness I'm looking for, but you know, a little more fluidity, fluidity, fluidity. You say that fluidity. That one's looking a little funky, but we'll just leave it. <laughs> Looks like we got one little guy over here. Um, and I'll just draw a little circle for the head, and then like a teardrop shape for the body for this guy. And he has really thin wings. So we're gonna do like two little um, half circles. Or not half circles, what am I talking about? Like teardrop shapes for the um, wings. Okay, and we're gonna make this guy the same way, a little circle, teardrop shape for his body, and then um, two teardrop shapes for the wings. They're pretty much all shaped like this. Now that I look at them, just going different directions. Dragonfly. <laughs> I had too much paint on my brush. It's okay though, we can fix her up. It's starting to look like a duck. Okay. I don't want to go 
more too crazy on these birds just because I don't really think we need that many. Just because the painting's so pretty. Need a, I'm gonna make them all the same because that's kind of how they are in this picture. And it's just so pretty. And then we're gonna outline these ones as well. So they're all going different directions too. These birds look like they're confused and they don't know where they're going. They're like lost. They're like, I have no idea where I am. Kind of like how I used to be when I was a teenager. Didn't know where I was. Didn't know where I was going. I was just flying all over the darn place. Yeah, that was fresh. Fresh like Joe Pesci. Shut up, There's no such thing as prosciutto. Isn't that pizza? <laughs> I think so. I think, are you thinking of bruschetta? Like that? Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's not bread. cheese, it's like a yeah. bread with that like dip. Well, I think prosciutto is a pizza, so I want prosciutto cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey, that works actually. All right. Um, I don't really feel like we need Yo, my, my bars are deep. <laughs> yeah, deep, just like, like your soul. What do you think, Nate? Do we need some more birds? Can you see? It's the mountains. I'm not putting mountains. You guys want to hear a funny story? Huh? So, I was... Huh? Like, Stop! I wasn't asking you. You've heard it a million times, because it's about you. The suit is black. The suit is black. The suit is not. <laughs> black okay so i was painting this painting for his mom for like ah. mother's day knock it off i was that is so rude honestly um i was painting this <laughs> painting for his mom for either her birthday or mother's day i can't remember why but it was i was doing a silhouette at first and um it was a silhouette painting and I was like, oh, he like got home from work or whatever. And I was like, oh, I painted this for your mom. What do you think? And he looks at it and he goes, needs mountains. And I like was so upset because I had worked so hard on that painting. I was just like, devastated. But it ended up being much better because I was like, you know, maybe this isn't the best painting. And I... He said it, you know, it looked like too simple or whatever. So I ended up whiting out the whole thing. And then I started from scratch and I put mountains in there and it wasn't a silhouette, it was just like a, I'll put a picture of it somewhere. And just of like, she's from Arizona and I wanted to paint her something that would remind her of home. Um, so it was an Arizona sunset and I added like mountains and all sorts of like different things in there. Anyway, I'll put it somewhere so y'all can see it. Anyway, and now, like, that's our joke. Like, every time I ask him if he likes a painting, he says, needs mountains. Anyway, you guys might not find that funny, but the reason I find it funny is because that's one of my favorite pa paintings, like, I ever, like, painted. You know, it, it, I just loved it after I had redone it, because I didn't like it that much, like, before. So just with that one thing it it changed the whole you know painting it well it was a completely different painting um anyway i ended up very grateful that that happened even though it hurt my feelings but in the long run it was a good thing now what we're gonna do is you kind of want to make sure these are dry which they are i don't recommend putting your finger on your painting like that i do it all the time and i shouldn't um, we're going to outline them with white, just like everything else, so we can actually see them. Um, you don't have to go ham on these, just, you know, really lightly outline them so you can see them. Make sure your brush isn't too wet, like mine is. <laughs> And you can just do, you know, you don't, you can partially outline them. I want to fully outline them. My head isn't in the way. I tend to do that. 
because this is like such an awkward angle to paint at and I tried to film it um, which most of this tutorial is going to be like from an overhead view but that was like even more awkward because the lighting there was like a the glare from the light just um, it wasn't doing it for me I just found it way more difficult to film that way I don't know most people do it like that but I just I that's not for me this even though this is like awkward to sit like this or whatever I'm just totally ruining this part um <laughs> we can fix it with some black see what I mean it's like I can't chew gum and walk can't paint and talk let's fix her up Probably gotta learn how to paint and talk because uh, I'm doing painting tutorials and I think that matters. I don't want this bird to look weird. She kind of looks weird. I'm not gonna do it. I want her to be as pretty as possible. <laughs> She's on the bottom and you can really see her. It's a girl. Her name is Mabel. I'm just kidding. I don't know what her name is. I'm not going to sit here and name all the birds. That would be really weird. And very like something I would do. <laughs> all right. Um, so we got her. Now let's do this little fella here. Her little tail. And I probably won't film me outlining all the birds because you guys kind of understand how to do this, I think. Um, so I'm just going to finish outlining the birds, um, I'll just finish outlining these birds and then just meet me back here when we're all done with the painting. She's finished here, we have our third and final galaxy goddess, here she is all done, our galaxy goddess, um, thank you for painting along with me. Uh, if you have any video suggestions, just leave them below. Um, also, if you do this tutorial, please um, send them to me on my social media, which is Love Pray Paint at Instagram or Twitter, um, and then Facebook. I'll have that linked, uh, so you can send it to me on there as well. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you follow along. Um, yeah, I really like how all of these turned out. So, yeah. If you want to see more videos, please like and subscribe. Bye. Thank you so much. Um, much gratitude to anybody who has subscribed to me and um, who's following along with these. I really appreciate it. And please don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um, like I said, if you have any video suggestions or if you did these, I would love to see the final product. Um, yeah, and that's it. Have a awesome day. An awesome day. Hey, hey. Right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>